In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can add a small power up to our game. So if I lose a bit of health, like so, I can click this heart that falls down the page to recoup that health. So each heart that comes down is worth one life. Okay, so it's pretty simple and it will just help you prolong the game. Um, so we're going to need to head over to Scratch to get started. And you'll need to open your previous file that we've been working on. We've got a fair bit going on in this now. So we just have a quick recap. We've got our spaceship flying through the sky. We've got bad guys that we can shoot. Those bad guys can also take health off us. And if we lose three lives, it will eventually be game over as well. So just like that. So as I said, to help prolong the game, what we're going to do is add in some small power-ups, just those little... Um, red hearts that you saw and they will give us one extra life each time we collect them. So to bring them in you'll need to load in a new sprite. So head down to your sprite list and if you're in my class I'll give you access to this sprite. If you're watching on YouTube check out the link in the video description below. Uh, so click on upload sprite and just grab that red heart. It comes out quite big when you bring it in for the first time so you need to go to your properties here and change it from 100% to 10% of its original size. So it is fairly small now. And the first thing I want to do is I want to hide it from my screen. I don't want it to fall straight down the page. And I definitely don't want it to appear right in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to go over to my events. And when the green flag is clicked, I'll go to looks. And I'll simply hide it. So that hides um, that red heart when we press the green flag. Okay, good start. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to create a clone of it. Because we're going to have multiple hearts falling down the page throughout our game, we can't just use this single original sprite. So we need to clone it each time we want a new heart to fall down the page. So we need to go to our control tab over here and bring out create clone of myself. And okay, before we attach it up here, there's a few other things I want to do. I don't want the heart to fall down straight away. And in fact, I want the heart to fall down the page fairly rarely, so maybe once every one to two minutes. So to do that, you'll just need to tell it in your control tab to wait before it comes onto the screen. And we're going to wait, well, let's do it a random time. So we're going to pick a random number, anywhere between 60 and 120 seconds. So every one to two minutes, we will see one of those hearts clone themselves, and we're going to tell them in a minute to start falling down the page. Now I want these two lines of code to keep occurring regularly throughout the game, so we're going to need to wrap them up inside of a forever loop. And just attach that to the code we've already got. So that's the first bit of code. So when we start our game, we hide the star, we wait one to two minutes, and then we create a clone of it. And that way the first star will appear. And now we need to tell it where to appear and how to fall down the page. It's pretty similar code to our enemy actually, so you might recognize some of this code as we do it. So when I start as a clone, it's the first script we need to bring out, we're going to tell it where we want the heart to start falling from. So let's choose the go to X and Y coordinates. Now for the X coordinates, we're going to pick random numbers again. Remember the X axis is the one that runs left to right, the horizontal axis. And we want the heart to fall at random positions across that X axis each time it appears on the page. So let's pick a random number between minus 200 on the x-axis and 200 on the x-axis. That's basically anywhere from over here on the left to over on the right. That heart could appear anywhere along that axis. And the y value is going to be 180, which sits just above the top of our page there. So once it appears, it's just going to be off the screen. And now we need to tell it to move down the page. Okay, so we are going to use a loop for this. It's a repeat until loop. So the heart is going to fall, and it's going to keep falling until it hits the bottom of the page. So we're going to repeat until its Y position is less than something. So let's get the Y position. So the Y position of the heart is where it's sitting on the Y axis. Okay, so wherever it's sitting on the Y axis, it's checking, and it needs to be basically greater than minus 175, which means it's on the screen. Once it hits minus 175 and goes below that, which is the bottom of the screen, what we're going to do is um, basically delete it. Okay, so we can delete that clone. That goes down there. Now in this gap here, I've just got to put in the code to tell the heart to actually move down the page. I forgot to stick that in a second ago. 
So change Y. We'll put minus 5. Okay, and I'm just going to snap that code in there. And I'll just quickly explain it again. So when our first heart appears, the clone of the heart, it's going to go somewhere on the x-axis up the top here. Okay, and it's going to start falling down the page at speed minus 5. If we had positive 5, it would be going up the page. So to keep it going down the page, we have to go down the y-axis. That's why I've got negative 5 as our speed. And it's going to keep falling down the page at speed negative 5 until our y position, so our position of the heart on the y-axis, it's the vertical axis, until that hits minus 175, which is the bottom of the page. Once it hits the bottom of the page, it jumps out of this loop and just runs this last block of code to delete the clone. So it deletes the heart if the heart reaches the bottom of the page. Okay, do want to test that now. So instead of waiting one to two minutes for that heart to appear, I might just put one to two seconds, actually one to three seconds, and just run my game. So we should see a heart appear pretty quickly. Oh, I can see why it's not going. We forgot to tell it to show itself. So let's quickly just uh, go to looks and we want to say show. That would definitely help. Let's try again. There we go. So there's our first heart. It's the bottom of the screen and he's gone. So what we want to do now is we want to be able to collect these hearts. As you can see now, I'm running over them and I can't collect them. So we need to add in a little snippet of code to say what happens if the spaceship is touching the heart. So we need to go to our control and bring out when I start as a clone again. Let's move these up a bit. So when I start as a clone, uh, we need to basically check to see if the spaceship is touching the heart. So let's use an if then statement and a sensing. So if this heart is touching the spaceship, what do we want it to do? Well, we want to change our lives by one. That means we're going to get one life added to our health bar. Okay, and after that, we just want to delete the clone. So that means once our spaceship and the heart collide, the heart will delete itself. So it won't reach the bottom of the page. It'll just delete itself when it hits our ship. Now we need to wrap that up in a forever loop if we want that to work. So the computer's always listening out and waiting for our spaceship and the heart to collide. Let's give that a test run and see if we can get ourselves um, some, some different hearts. I'll lose a bit of life first so that our health bar drops. Now I've got some hearts. There we go. So the hearts can be collected and my health went back to 100%. The only issue we've got there is there's no sound when I collect them. We need to acknowledge to the user or the player that we've collected that heart. So it'd be good to put in a positive sound because we're achieving something positive in our game. So let's go over to our sounds tab and load in a sound. We're going to search for one called coin. It's like you're collecting a coin. Okay, it's just a quick little bleep. So we can go to sounds now and we're just going to choose the one that says start sound coin. Put it in above where we change our lives. So when um, the heart touches the spaceship, we'll play a sound, that coin being collected, and we'll then change our lives by one and then delete the heart. That's about it, I think. So let's just test that to make sure it's working. Remember, I want to lose a life first to see how much my health go back up. So I'll lose a bit of life. Might lose another one. And now I'll collect some health to try and recoup it and get it back to 100%. There we go. So that's working quite well. The only thing I want to change now before finishing up is just back here where we had to wait for the heart to fall on the screen. Remember, I don't want the hearts to fall down very um, frequently. So I'm going to change it back to 60 to 120 seconds. So every one to two minutes, we should see a heart fall on the screen. If you want to change that up, by all means you can. You might want to do 30 to 60 seconds. That might be a better option. Okay, it's up to you. But that there is the code you need to add a heart to your screen. So this game is really coming together now. Um, I think I might look to add a more difficult enemy in the next video tutorial. So I'll see you then.